This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And we are recording our first show of 2023. We are pleased to have as our guest, Marty Del Nevo, uh, the chair of the forthcoming Vermont Quilt Festival, uh, to tell us all about the wonderful world of quilting and how Vermont uh, fits in this world and uh, some very exciting events coming up in the near future and later on at the show. Uh, welcome, Marty. Thank you, Dennis, for having me. Tell us first a little bit about yourself or a lot about yourself. <laughs> well, I, um, I've been, as far as quilting goes, I've been quilting for thir over 30 years. And um, after having a successful career with IBM for 39 years, when I retired in 2016, I thought I had always been a volunteer with Vermont Quilt Festival for years. I had entered some quilts and I thought, well, maybe now it's my time to give give back to the organization. So I joined as uh, the contest chair at the end of 2016. So I, um, I was the contest chair for two years, 2017 and 2018. And um, and then became the chair of the festival in 2019, which was our last in-person show. Mm -hmm. And then we were planning the 2020 show and the pandemic hit. So everything was was shut down. I see. Well, tell us a little bit about the world of quilting. Uh, in past years, we have had people come into the studio and we may do that uh, later this year mm -hmm. as the show gets uh, closer and they explain to us various quilts, but give our uh, viewers a, a general overview of the of the world of quilting. Well, it's no longer your grandmother's quilt, quilting world, where everything was calicos and hand tied, or, you know, um, maybe they did crazy quilts for, for display. Basically in quilting these days, anything goes. And the festival um, does showcase traditional quilts and modern quilts, which are very graphic, very, um, a lot of open negative space that people use for quilting. Um, we have art quilts. Um, we have um, just a wide variety, all shapes and sizes. Appliqued, um, where we're, we even have quilts made of some non-traditional materials such as leather or Tyvek and things like that. I mean, people, People use their creativity, and it's it's a wonderful thing to see. Tell us and, a little bit. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, t tell us a little bit about the history of, of quilting, what, where it came from, and how it pertains to New England or, or any other part of the world. Oh boy, um, I'm not really a quilt historian. I don't come from a long line of of, of quilters, um, unlike a lot of my friends who have grandmothers and great grandmothers that they that they learned from. But I think, I mean, from what I've learned over the years, quilting um, was initially, it, it was a very American thing and was used to make, it was, they were, it was a utility. Uh, it was a necessary, it was a need. People needed to be worn. So it started with, I think, a lot of people using um, maybe clothing that was worn out and um, the women of the time would sit together and, or in the evening, perhaps even, you know, cut fabric and put bits of fa fabric together in order to make quilts for, for the beds for the family. I think from, from reading, I also know that it was a, um, a social thing. <clears throat> Groups of women would get together and that's where you get the quilting bees from. Women would get together and help each other finish a quilt because it was all, all hand quilted. And even when I started quilting um, back in, you know, back in the early, late 80s, early 90s, there was still a lot of hand quilting going on. And uh, machine quilting was a little bit frowned upon. But um, but then I think in history, women also started to use, um, you know, more wealthy fa families. We, we know we've seen quilts. If you go to the Shelburne Museum here, you'll see many, many quilts, which you know were made from very expensive materials and they were used more for decorative um, purposes. And then different parts of the country or different parts of the world have different different quilting techniques that are um, you know, more or less specific or indicative of, of their areas now. And if you go to one of the quilt shows that hosts international, a lot of international quilters, 
you would see those some of those differences from from region to region. One of the things that we noticed from our, our past treatments of the Vermont Quilt Festival was the variety of people involved, uh, male, female, uh, young people, older people, teenagers. Uh, how did this all develop? Well, uh, Richard Cleveland was the was the founder of the Vermont Quilt Festival. He started it basically as a guild show, I believe, back in the um, middle middle seventies, when there was a huge resurgence of quilting in the United States, probably due to the bicentennial at the time. And um, so that's where it started. He he Vermont Quilt Festival has been going since since the mid seventies, and um, and it was always open to um, anyone. It is it is still one of the only quilt shows that I'm aware of where the quilts that are entered to the contest are not juried. So it's a first come first serve. Your quilt, if you enter a quilt into the contest, it is not judged necessarily against other quilts because our judges do have a form and they look at your quilt alone, judge it, give you pointers on what you did really well, where you could improve a few things. And so it is it is a wonderful learning experience for 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 people. Um, there's no prize money in in the show, but we do give ribbons. And um, and then the youth quilters, which we pride ourselves on, and we do plan to have a youth quilting section again in 2023. We're not sure what the gifts will be. That's always, you know, up to the discretion of um, our sponsors. And um, but we we do pride our ourselves on having um, a very robust youth component to our show and to our contest in order to encourage young people to to take up the art of of quilting. And it is an art. It is a craft, but it's also an art. And the interest in the uh, in the art form is, is also, uh, I, I suppose. Uh, spawn some collections and some uh, valuations and some rare quilts and I guess like any other hobby uh, some uh, value in, uh, in, in the collections themselves uh, you know I, I know people are not going in there to just get an award-winning or a, uh, that kind of thing but what about how it's increased in value and the whole economic aspects of this uh, art form over the years well, I mean, over the years, the one component that we always have within the show is our antique exhibit. So um, we like to showcase those because those, that is where some value is. I mean, if you have some quilts um, from, you know, 100, 200 years ago, there's some value there. And, and there's historical value. There's emotional value, of course, and probably some by financial value as well. Um, and we try to showcase um, where quilting came from. As, as far as as far as the, the business of quilting, it is a huge business. I mean, in years past, I don't know what the pandemic has necessarily done for it, but in years past, I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. There, you, you know, and um, one thing I know that during the pa pandemic, Many people pulled out sewing machines, dusted off their sewing machines that have been sitting up in the attic and um, or bought machines and uh, started making, obviously, masks or other needs for the pandemic. And I think many of those people, what I see because I work part time also in a quilt shop, is that many people who started that during the pandemic now that they're not making masks anymore, it's like, OK, what do we do with these machines? We like sewing. And so people have come in and and the and they have taken introduction to quilting cl cl classes and we have a whole new group of people who are quilting and, and there's a renewed interest in it. I'm hoping that continues. That's great. And, and it's also good for business too in the in Vermont to uh, you know all the associated vendors and venues around the area and tourism. It, it, uh, uh, could you just tell us about? I remember from the prior shows, you had a lot of visitors coming to this. Can you give us some of the numbers? Yes, absolutely. It It is, to me, it's always surprising <laughs> because in Vermont, being small, you don't think of, you think a few thousand people. We have well over 10,000 people attending our show over the, over the three day full days that it's open. 
And um, to me, that's a very large number. And considering that we haven't had a live show, an in-person show since 2019, we're expecting to see those numbers again. And we already have interest from um, some bus companies. There are some tour groups coming. We've already been contacted about how do we make hotel reservations. It is. We are during the during the pandemic when we were talking with the state. Um, it was very it was eye opening and also very heartwarming to learn that for the state for Mont Quilt Festival actually is a very is a small economic engine for Chittenden County because of the number of people that do come in, and it it has as you say a ripple effect. They come to the show. They're going to go out to dinner. They're going to stay in a hotel. They're going to get gasoline. They're going to pick up groceries. So it's it's a widespread. They're going to go to quilt shops. So the local quilt shops see a, a an influx of of people. So it's um and that's even though we have you know usually we have we run about ninety to a hundred vendors. They'll still go visit other shops. So it does have that ripple effect. It's not contained. It's not solely contained within Champlain Valley Expo. That's great. Well, give us an idea. Uh, it, it's scheduled for uh, June, but now there is a contest going on. Tell us about that contest. Well, the contest um, goes on during the, you know, people can come in and see all the contest quilts during the festival, which is June 25th through 28th. June 21 <laughs> to 25th. But you have June a contest. through the 29th. <laughs> I have June 21 um, to the 24th. Okay. That that could I I am sorry I should no know problem. this <laughs> no problem that's why we're doing it so early but right uh, I understand February one there's a uh, yes con on, February 1st, on February first on February first is the um is, is the the contest will open and as I said it is a it is a first come first serve because it is not a judged show um, with the reconfiguration of our space that we that we tried for the first time in 2019. We are able to have more quilts on display. And so we're hoping we normally receive about 235 quilts for the contest. Um, and that includes our youth quilts. But we're hoping that we will see more than that. And, um, you know, and we could, because we do have the space to expand. We, um, we will have a category of non-judged if there are people out there who do not want to have their quilts judged, but still want to share their quilt with 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 the with the audience. They're more than welcome to to enter the quilt, and um, and we you know it normally fills up within the first few days. So I know I've seen co uh, comments on Instagram and Facebook. Um, how quickly does it fill up? Do I need to be ready at noon on the first? You should be pretty ready. Take a look out there on the website at the form. It's there for you to look at. It's there for you to get your materials pulled together so that you have your photograph, you have all the information that, that we're asking for. And then when February 1st comes, you're ready to, you know, ready to fill it in and submit it. What Tell us about the process for this. Uh, I know we're, it's, it's going to start in a day or two, uh, but tell us how that works. And, and how, do people bring quilts in or do they just do it photographic? No, it's just a photograph. So we need we need to have you submit your quilt, um, submit all your information, attach an image, just upload an image of your quilt, and we only need the 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 front of it. Um, that is, you know, we take a look at it. Um, the majority of quilts we we accept. We do not accept quilts. Um, you can't enter quilts that are made from a block of the month or a kit where you did not select the fabrics. So that's the key. The judges want to see your fabric selection. You can use the, someone else's pattern, but they want to see what you do with, with it. So anything that was prepared for you basically is not accepted into the contest. And um, and and then we, you know, we need the size of the quilt, um, what you consider it to be, whether it's traditional or modern or um, whether you have applique or not. <clears throat> and um, and then we we look at you know we look at the pictures we sort them and then we put them into the categories we use the pictures for a couple of things identification when you drop it off and when you pick it up most important that it gets back to the right person um, 
we use it in a, we use your photograph in order to lay out the contest so that we we do try to put pleasing colors together so that when we have our bays set, set, set up you know a lot of times if we have three quilts that all depict flowers and we can put them all together in one place you know we we do or if we have some other theme we you know we try to put them together so that they look nice to, to um together um but at, at, as i said it is first come first serve we're not judging we're we're not we're not a jury you we're not using your picture to select oh we're not going to have that that one in unless it, for some reason it's inappropriate for our show based on our rules and who is going to be taking an initial look at these uh if anyone um well our contest chair is carrie zizza and she's the one who will receive all of your um all of the applications she's the one who organizes it and sets it up and lays out the display and um and then when the show is hung then then right be the saturday before the show opens people who are close to us will drive up and drop their quilts off we also will have instructions if you're not close enough to drive on up to us on on that saturday there are mailing instructions and um and then if you need them mailed back to you we will mail them back to you and the um so on that Saturday, we take the quilts in, we, um, you know, we mark, we identify them, we tag them, and then on that weekend, Sunday and Monday, we hang all the quilts. And on, uh, I believe, since the show opens on Wednesday evening, we're we're judging on Monday and Tuesday, and then Wednesday morning is for the last few cleanup items. That's great. So it. What, once we start, it is a hectic week. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, give us an idea. Uh, again, I, I wanted to get this uh, in early because of the fact that the last one was in 2019. Uh, give us an idea what people can expect uh, at the Champlain Valley Exposition uh, when it opens. Well, when it, we, we will open with, with the uh, awards ceremony on... Um, Wednesday, June 21st, and yes, the show is running from June 21st through June tw uh, 24th, and we will <laughs> we will open um, with the contest, um, with, with the awards ceremony, and then at 7, 6.30 or 7, we're still discussing what time we'll open, but we'll have the chocolate and champagne preview, like we always have, mm -hmm. and um, where people can come get a first preview. Our vendors will, will be available so people can come in and shop. They can come in and look at the quilts. Um, classes will start on that Wednesday as well in the morning. We will have our class catalog out online here soon. That'll be coming in February. Um, and um, and then during the, during the festival, we'll have classes on, yeah, as I said, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all day, half day classes on Saturday. And then we will have multiple ex exhibits. We have a few new challenges aside from the contest. We will have, um, as I said, our antiques exhibit. We have um, three other exhibitors. You'll have to come to the show to find out who they are. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, and hopefully, you know, we also have also an exhibit of, um, we ask our, our instructors to send along a quilt that we hang in a display so that people can enjoy the quilt at uh, the uh, instructor's work as well. And, um, and we have a, you know, we have a, a roster of classes. This time we're looking at classes that are beginner and intermediate, because we know that there's a lot of um, um, experienced quilters there who may want to refine a technique or learn a new te technique. So we are also looking for instructors that have more, a little bit more advanced classes and they will run the gamut from color to a mystery quilt to um different technique classes applique wool applique uh piecing um we plan to do some work with machine quilting and we're hoping to have some long arming classes for people that have long arms or are looking to to purchase one and and learn more about them what's a long arm a long arm is is a is a machine that um, 
it comes in two varieties. So people put their quilts together, the top of the quilt together on a regular domestic sewing machine that everyone is familiar with. And then there's a couple of types of long arms or mid arms. One is a sit down, which is a large table and you're still, but the only function for the machine is for it to quilt the three layers of the quilt together. Cause it's not a quilt until you have the top, the bottom and the batting in between. Um, and so with a, with a mid arm, you, you're still moving the fabric underneath the needle in most cases. A long arm, you load, you actually have a, a machine with a very large frame that can be from, you know, five feet to 12 feet. And you load the back of the quilt onto two of the rollers. Um, then you put the batting in and then you put the top in and you attach it to the, uh, the other two layers. And it does the quilting. You move the head of the machine moves uh, over the top of the quilt. The quilt remains stationary on the frame. And that's how we put the three layers together. Well, you described a little bit of the technology. And uh, uh, what about the range uh, of this? Do, do you have people who are doing this all by hand and others who do machines or other things Absolutely. like that? Give us an idea of the, of the varieties of quilt making. Absolutely. We still have... Um, because when you enter a quilt to the contest, we ask you, is it hand quilted? Is it machine quilted? Um, and then if it's machine quilted, is it done by your domestic machine? There are plenty of people who are quilting their, their quilts on their regular sewing machine. And um, so we ask, we ask for the breakdown. And um, so it runs the gamut. There are still plenty of people doing hand quilting that enjoy the pace of hand quilting. And then there are others who you know, don't do that anymore. And they want to do, they want to do it by, by machine. Um, many people, the other thing we also ask is, did you quilt the quilt or did you have someone else do it? Because there's a whole industry has been built up around quilting where there are people who actually all they do, well, not all they do, but one of the services they provide is to long arm quilts. So I make the top I take my top and maybe my backing and, and my batting as well to another person. And then they put the quilt together for me. And then it comes back to me to put the binding on. And um, so we ask that as well. And if a quilt receives um, an award, we also acknowledge the person who has quilted it. If it isn't the, if it isn't the same person who made the original quilt top. Great. Because we need to we need to honor them as well. That's great. Well, I noticed from past shows that there was a, a good deal of international interest. I think there was some quilters who came from England or, or other countries. Uh, we, any of that this year uh, in the in the in the works? We we do. We usually receive a, a several a fair number of quilts from Canada, which I know living up here, you know, I don't necessarily think of Canada as international because <laughs> we don't have to cross a body of water, but they are. <laughs> And um, and then there is there has been interest from we've received quilts from Germany. Um, a few years ago, we had interest from someone in Japan. So it is it is an interesting it it is a it is a it is a mix. The majority of quilts are from the U.S. Many are from Vermont. We actually have one category best Vermont quilt that receives our governor's award. We're hoping to have the governor or someone from his office there this year. Um, I hope we can make that happen. And then, of course, we have our Founders Award, and that is from, we always invite Richard Cleveland to select his favorite quilt. That's so, right. Can you give us an idea of the faculty uh, for some of these courses? Uh, who are they? Uh, are they uh, famous in the field or, or just famous locally? Uh, some of the people who will be teaching. Well, we have, I, I don't know the full list of teachers at this point. Um, but I do know that we have a lot of uh, regional, what I'm gonna call, say, regional instructors. Um, we've got people, Kimberly Imo is coming. She is a well-known name. Um, we didn't think she would be here, but she is back in the US and, um, and will be, you know, she's a wonderful, su wonderful supporter for us. And she will be um, with us for four days. She'll be teaching four, four different classes and off the top of my head I I am a little reluctant to name too many other 
people. Although we do pull, we do invite teachers nationally to um, to to submit their proposals, and we have a lot of proposals. So we're hoping that we have that we'll have a roster of instructors in the range of twenty five to forty instructors. We're still finalizing the list. Sure. And can you give us an idea of the vendors? I know it's a very interesting part of all kinds of conventions. I go to stamp collective things. These vendors, these exhibits. Tell us a little bit about who's going to well, be there. The vendors is um, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> we have um, we're, we're looking to have about ninety vendors. We're slowly climbing there, and um, we have what we're doing differently this year is we're inviting um, since we are the Vermont Quilt Festival we decided we wanted to focus on some Vermont crafts as well. So we are inviting Vermont craftspeople, um, not necessarily associated with fiber or quilting, but to come apply at the festival to be a vendor and um, to, show, to show what Vermont has. Because we get, as I said, we have over 10,000 people over the course of a few days. That's a lot of exposure. For yeah. our, and I think it's worthwhile to to give our Vermont artists some exposure as well. Additionally, we have you know we have our our, our machine sponsors, Janome, Bernina, um, Elna. You know we'll have some long arming people there, hopefully, and um, thread people, fabric, um, and then a lot of a lot of local shops, a lot of regional vendors that are focused on. Um, not just we just we not just fabric vendors, but we also have um, like Door Woolen Mill or Door Woolen Mill is co is coming, and they they focus on wool and rug rug hooking, but it pertains to quilting because a lot of quilts are made with wool. It's done with wool applique, and a lot of quilters also are interested in knitting, and weaving, and rug hooking, and other fiber arts. So, so we try to have a lot of, you know, a good selection of, of um, vendors that focus on, on fiber art. Absolutely. And then we always have our, you know, we will, we'll have, um, we have some clothing vendors that are hand dyed, um, hand dyed clothing. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a range. That's great. And um, so I'm hoping that we, we will have, and we should be getting a lot, some new vendors because during the pandemic, sadly, we did lose some some of our vendors who have decided to retire or no longer travel. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still in business, but they've decided not to travel. I see. Well, that sounds great. And and hopefully we're gonna have you back just before or at the time of the festival to get a look at some of the some of the wonderful quilts. Uh, I know we've had you in the studio years and years. Uh, and it's amazing. We, we had to even get extra space in the studio to put some of these <laughs> huge quilts up and uh, took a while to set up, but we will be in touch. And uh, that, I wanna, uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. It sounds like this is very exciting. And I'm glad to get an early heads up on this for our viewers. And uh, you have a web, website, uh, www.vqf.org. That's the, Yes, that is our website. And um, we'll we we are we are trying to maintain the homepage so that it is convenient for people to find. You know, we were focused on vendors primarily a month or two ago, so that was on the homepage. Now we've moved contests there. Um, you know, and soon as soon as our classes are available, we we will do our best to make it easy for people to find what they're looking for. That's great. Well, we will be in touch, and uh, I want to thank you. Just. Maybe you can give our viewers a, a little bit of a send off. We're coming near the end. Uh, just uh, say goodbye or, or just give us a, another little pitch if you want. Well, I hope that people who are watching, you don't have to be a quilter to come to the show. I think anyone who enjoys seeing color and um, and people's artistic talent would, would en enjoy visiting the uh, show. And um, I hope to see many, many new new faces, as well as many of our old friends who have come to visit us over the years. So thank you, Dennis. I appreciate the exposure so early. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I want to say that our guest today on Positively Vermont has been Marty Del Nevo, uh, the chairperson of the Vermont Quilt Festival. And thank you, Marty. And thank you all for watching.